When we talk about an autograph in the modern world, uh, we're usually thinking about a signature of somebody famous, perhaps a, a sports figure or an entertainment figure uh, who signs their name on some piece of memorabilia for us. But in the academic world, when we talk about an autograph, we mean something that was in the actual handwriting of the author. Let me give you an example of how texts got produced in the ancient world, starting with the autograph of the Aeneid by Virgil. So you would have the original work, uh, so we'll just say Aeneid here, right? And that would be the autograph. That would be what the poet Virgil actually wrote with his own hands, Armo, Virumque, Cano, Troiae, uh, and so forth. And then somebody said, hey, I've heard, Virgil, you've, you've written this poem. I'd like a copy of that. Uh, and so then someone would make a copy. Uh, and so we have our first copy of the Indian. And somebody else says, hey, Virgil, I want a copy of that too. Uh, and so that person makes a copy. And then another person makes a copy. Uh, and so on and so forth. And so you get lots and lots of copies. And then maybe this guy's friend says, hey, I heard you have a copy of Virgil's Aeneid. Could I get a copy of that? And so they would send somebody who would then hand copy that one, not from the original, but from a copy. So now we've got a copy of a copy. And maybe that happens again and again here. And this guy has a friend who makes a copy here. Uh, and then this guy here, he has a friend who makes a copy here. Uh, and another friend who makes a copy here. And so on and so forth. And you can see how this would just start branching out. Right, copies all over the place, and copies of copies of copies of copies of copies. Now, over time, what happens, of course, is that things get lost, things get destroyed. And so we now no longer have at all the original autograph. We have, don't have at all the original that Virgil actually wrote in his own hand. Matter of fact, of these copies of copies, uh, some of them have been completely lost, Others of them have been damaged, and so we've only got parts of some of those. And so now we've got, okay, we've got this, this kind of a mess here. And so at this point here in, in the 21st century, we don't have anything of the original. In fact, we don't have any of these copies of copies of copies. The first copy that we have is about 400 years after Virgil lived. And so now what a scholar will do is come along, the, uh, or a bunch of, a team of scholars will come along, and they'll say, okay, well, how do we know what Virgil actually wrote? So they'll take all these partial copies of manuscripts, and they'll start to put them together, and most of them are going to agree pretty well. But you know, if you've ever tried to copy something from somebody, sometimes you don't get it copied exactly right. And so what happens if you have a couple of manuscripts that are different? You say, well, okay, so um, maybe this, I'm just going to give a, a random example here. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe this manuscript here has the word puer, okay? And uh, this manuscript here has the word puella, and this manuscript here has puella, and one way back here has puer. And you're going, okay, well, what, what, what do we know is right here? Well, one way to figure it out is to say, well, probably the older one, right? It's closer, maybe by several hundred years away still, but at least it's closer to what Virgil actually wrote. And so you may say, well, maybe that, that one's correct. Uh, on the other hand, you may find you've got more manuscripts that had Puella. And even though... This one down here has puer, and one way back up here closer to Virgil had puer. More of them had puella, and maybe some of these were in better shape, and you say, well, okay, actually, maybe puella is the word. And it turns out that when uh, a scholar or a team of scholars puts together a text, uh, what they will do, and this is the uh, standard Oxford text uh, of Virgil, uh, and we're going to show you this here uh, in a moment, but at the very beginning, uh, what they will do is show you the list of all the manuscripts 
that they've used here. For example, you see here uh, M equals Florentinus Laurentianus, P equals Vaticanus Palatinus, R equals Vaticanus uh, Vat Lat 3867, uh, and it goes on from there. And so they will list all the manuscripts that they used to build their text. And then if there's a disputed passage, they'll indicate that. So I'm taking a look here over in book two, uh, starting in line 567. And you can take a look at this with me. You notice that line 567 begins, Yam quadio super unus eram, and it's marked off with a square bracket. And the last square bracket is then over on line 587 that ends with furiata mente ferrebar. That whole section between those two brackets is disputed. And if we looked down at the bottom of the page, we would see that it turns out there are some manuscripts that have that whole section and some that don't. It's the passage where Aeneas sees Helen uh, on the last night of Troy. He's, he's trying to defend the city and he's looking around and uh, he sees Helen over uh, to the side cowering in the darkness. And all of a sudden he gets really angry because he thinks, hey, Helen is the one uh, that's at, at fault here. If it weren't for Helen, we wouldn't be having the Trojan War. My city wouldn't be falling apart and dying here. Uh, that whole passage, which is a famous passage, and it's actually been uh, done in, in graphic art. Um, it, it, it's included in most of the translations of Virgil. Actually is a disputed passage. We're not 100% sure if Virgil actually wrote it at all. Yeah, that's right. It's possible that some Somebody else actually just inserted that and said, hey, this would be a good passage, and it sounds kind of like something Virgil would write. And somebody who was actually copying one of the manuscripts actually just put that in on their own. Now, I've written a piece about this, and, and I'll, I'll give you the link uh, at the end of the video. I actually think that Virgil did write it, um, but we're not going to go into that in this video. Uh, but it's possible that he didn't. Now, just one other thing I want to bring up here about all of this is that the texts that we have are built from careful study by scholars who are really trying to get the correct text. And a lot of people bring this question up when it comes to the Bible. Say, well, isn't that true with the Bible? We don't have autographs, right? We don't have anything that's actually written by John or Matthew or Isaiah. And that's true. We don't. We don't have any biblical autographs. But here's the neat thing about the Bible. We have more and better manuscripts for the Bible than for any other text coming from the ancient world. And, and when it comes to the Gospels, the stories of Jesus, we have manuscripts that are so close to the time when Jesus actually lived. There's nothing else like it. We have nothing from Homer or Virgil or Cicero or Caesar or Plato or Aristotle or any of those guys that comes anywhere close to the solid manuscript tradition for the Bible. So I hope that gives you just a little sense of what it's like to put together a text and how you actually get the text that you read in class.